Hello and for Bruce, this is Anton, and today we're going to be discussing the recent announcement from NASA in regards to the International Space Station, and more specifically, how it's going to end in approximately 9 years from now. In other words, NASA has officially determined when this particular mission and the entire space station is going to end, and that's going to be in 2031. But I wanted to discuss a little bit more about some of the recent updates in regards to the station, talk a little bit about something I don't usually talk about, which is drama in space, and also discuss some of the future implications in regards to the end of the mission and the end of the space station in general. But here, I guess let's start with the facts and the reasons behind the end for this mission. As you probably know by now, the International Space Station has been hosting astronauts since the year 2000. So basically for 22 years now. And here's what it used to look like back in December of 2000, taken by the astronauts from the Expedition 1. The astronauts you see right here, Bill Shepard in the middle, Yuri Gidzengo on the right, and the iconic Russian astronaut Sergei Krikalov, who we're going to discuss in a few minutes, on the left side of the picture. And he's iconic for one simple reason. He became the astronaut stranded in space during the dissolution of USSR, when it wasn't really certain who this particular space station known as Mir belonged to. And it actually took them a few months to bring him back. There is an older video about this somewhere on the channel, but I'm probably going to be discussing this in some of the future videos as well. And since that original mission, almost 300 people lived on the ISS, with nearly 110 countries participating in some sort of a research. Over 3,000 types of research has been published in the last 20 years or so, with almost 5,000 researchers participating in one way or another. In other words, this has been an extremely successful scientific mission, and even now it still has quite a lot of experiments going on and quite a lot of very important instruments, including some really, really powerful X-ray instruments that are still observing the night skies and are teaching us more about the universe. But the thing is, ISS was never really expected to operate this long, and pretty much most of the modules on the ISS have been designed with a lifetime of approximately 15 years. Meaning that by 2013 to maybe 2015, most of the modules here would already be sort of past expiry date. And it's really through various repairs and through various modifications that the scientists and the researchers on the ISS have been able to sort of prolong its lifetime. And so by 2031, it's actually going to be 33 years old, with most modules operating approximately 16 years past their prime time, or past their expiry date, that is. But in theory, some of the modules could be replaced and it could operate longer. There are, however, some problems, and some modules are just way too expensive to replace. For example, the solar panel degradation and the battery degradation is a really big factor here. In order to replace all of these solar panels, it would just cost way too much for both NASA and a lot of other agencies involved in the project. And because of this, one of the temporary solutions that has sort of been implemented was basically just adding new solar panels on top of them. But this is not something that can be done indefinitely, and so eventually the solar panels and the batteries are just going to sort of expire, with the expected expiry date being 2028. Because of this, a few years ago it was proposed to possibly end the mission by 2024, especially because the funding at this point has sort of become an issue, and the station obviously costs NASA way too much. The entire station costs approximately $4 billion to operate every year, with the costs sort of climbing because of the inflation. But then on top of this, it's become kind of dangerous and somewhat uh, unpredictable to operate the station because of the amount of satellites in orbit, but also because of a lot of different types of junk flying everywhere. For example, you might have watched the video from last year about the discovery of a hole inside the Canada arm produced by some sort of a debris hitting the arm. And then just a few months later, some of the debris produced by an anti-satellite missile test by China in 2007 came really close to the ISS, creating an emergency, meaning that the station had to adjust its course. Also, unfortunately, around the same time, within just a month of this, Russia has conducted its own missile test that produced even more debris. And ironically, a piece of that debris then endangered the Chinese Tiangong-1 space station, which I'm sure did not make either Chinese or the Russians happy. And then on top of all of this, last year, or more specifically since 2018, there's been quite a lot of drama and quite a lot of conflict between NASA and Roscosmos, which came as a huge surprise to a lot of people that normally support Roscosmos and have been admiring the Russian space agency for a very long time. And specifically here, there are actually several incidents. 
For example, one of the bigger incidents involved the docking of the module you see right here, known as Nauka or Science. And following the docking, due to some sort of a software glitch inside the module, it suddenly and unexpectedly started firing its thrusters, which produced the first emergency on the ISS in years. The emergency actually caused the International Space Station to start spinning quite uncontrollably for quite a long time. And although the spin itself was quite minuscule, it was approximately half a degree per second, it was nevertheless large enough to potentially damage the station, and the actual damage is still not entirely clear. Although I guess this can happen to anyone. But then there were more, more issues also related to Roscosmos. For example, a few years ago there was a hole in one of the Russian modules. A hole that was leaking quite a lot of air, and eventually it was established that this hole was most likely drilled by someone. And although initially NASA established that it was most likely a very very silly manufacturing error, last year Roscosmos decided to blame this NASA astronaut for creating the hole because, according to them, she had a psychological breakdown. This is Serena Chancellor and she was on the ISS during that time, but how she could possibly access the Russian module and drill a hole in it, well, that's a mystery that nobody knows an answer to. And obviously nobody believes that, nobody buys that story, and it was really insulting for Roscosmos to even suggest that. And okay, I'm saying Roscosmos, and here's where we need to clarify things. In 2018, Roscosmos had a major change of power, basically they had a bit of a reshuffling going on. And the reason behind this was apparently because Roscosmos was becoming too bureaucratic, whatever that means. So this guy right here became its unofficial leader. And it's really ironic because for many years now, Dmitry Rogozin, who you see right here, was actually an extremely outspoken critic of the space industry. He even proposed shutting it down completely. And by the way, he has nothing to do with space industry. He's a former journalist who eventually became a politician. You can read more about him in the link in the description. But anyway, putting a space critic as basically the leader of space industry is not something anyone expected. As a matter of fact, it's kind of silly. I guess as an analogy here, it's kind of like if we put Alf, remember Alf, that character from like years ago, in charge of some kind of a cat shelter. And for those of you who have no idea who this character is, um, it's an alien who just likes eating cats. Okay, honestly, I tried to find a better analogy, but I couldn't. You get the idea. It's just a very silly idea to put someone like Rogozin behind what used to be one of the biggest space industries in the world. So as you can probably tell, I'm not a very big fan. And unfortunately, since he came to power in 2018, there's been a whole set of problems in Roscosmos. For example, it was discovered that approximately $400 million went missing and nobody knows where it is anymore. There was also that famous rocket launch that ended up as a failure, with fortunately all of the astronauts returning back to Earth alive, with the failure being caused once again by a manufacturing error. Then, not so long ago, Russia was launching more satellites, but someone programmed the rocket as if it was taken off from a completely different location, and so it never actually succeeded in launching the satellites. It crashed in the Pacific Ocean. But I think the worst thing that was done so far by Rogozin and basically whoever else is in power in Roscosmos is the demotion of this wonderful person, Sergei Krikalov, the guy I mentioned in the beginning. Probably the most experienced astronaut Roscosmos has, and the reason they demoted him is absolutely ludicrous. He was critical of Roscosmos for sending an actress and a film director to film a movie in space simply because NASA was talking about possibly sending Tom Cruise to do the same, although that's never really been confirmed. Moreover, because they were sent to space, two wonderful astronauts who have been trained their whole life to go to space never got to go to space at all, and one of them is now required to retire. And so Sergei right here chose to speak out against this and got demoted as a result, which actually created quite a lot of discontent with a lot of people generally supportive of Roscosmos and their policies. And I'm only telling you all of this just to sort of present the situation that Roscosmos is currently dealing with. It's basically experiencing an internal struggle. There are a lot of really smart people, a lot of talented people that want to succeed in this and want to make it work. But they're fighting against other people that want to just end this and want to completely withdraw from the cooperation with NASA for one reason or another. And though it's very difficult to obviously point fingers at whose fault it is, because of the recent comments from Roscosmos, especially in regards to blaming the NASA's astronaut, it sort of becomes clear that the leadership in this case is not really helping the situation. And so at this point, it's sort of unclear what's going to happen to the Russian contribution to the space station until 2031. 
And so currently there might be a chance that by 2024 Russia might actually withdraw. Which would be quite devastating for many Russian scientists who have worked on projects like this for decades. Either way, there's been quite a lot of drama because of this and quite a lot of uncertainty with what's going to happen with the Russian contribution. But despite all of these struggles and conflicts, NASA has officially extended the mission and has finally announced when the mission is going to end as well. And the official commitment is until at least 2030, with the space station very likely returning to Earth. Well, returning is a kind of a wrong word here, crashing to Earth in 2031. And we even sort of know where exactly it's going to crash as well. So what exactly did NASA recently announce? Well, first of all, they've confirmed that they're going to have funding until at least 2030, with the goal here, a slow transition to the private missions, with possibly even some of the modules being reused for these private missions later on. In other words, they hope that the private companies take over the idea of low Earth orbit station and replace all of the operation and all of the scientific research with their own modules, their own stations, and obviously their own funding with most of this hopefully done by late 2020s. And this of course confirms that the funding will now extend from 2024 until 2030. And all of this was announced after a thorough investigation whether the actual structural integrity of the station can survive this long. And turns out that it can, it seems to be okay for at least another 9 years. Although going back to Roscosmos, a lot of their modules actually do have an expiration date within the next few years. So once again, there might be a chance that the Russian uh, module, the Russian side, might completely separate and return their modules to Earth much earlier. And on top of this, NASA has recently awarded approximately half a billion dollars to three different commercial teams, a team known as NanoRacks, whose preliminary design you see right here, and also a team behind Northrop Grumman, and also Jeff Bezos' Blue Origin team to basically start working on the initial designs for a potential commercial space station that should be operational within the next few years. And once NASA decides on who to assign the project to, assuming that everything goes right, by 2033 NASA expects to save at least $1.7 billion a year by having the station operated commercially instead of uh, through government. So basically there will still be astronauts and there will still be missions on the space station, it's just the station itself is not going to be NASA-led. It's only going to be receiving some of the funding from NASA. And if there is some kind of a commercial space station by late 2020s, NASA will then slowly start removing modules one by one and also lowering the orbit of the International Space Station. Although the current scenario does require some of the Russian modules, specifically the Russian-built Progress Supply spacecraft, to assist with the boost by using their engines. You would need at least three of them for a successful lowering of the orbit. But if the Russia is no longer participating in the ISS, in this case NASA might have to rely on the other cargo ships such as Cygnus that you see right here. And although initially there are still going to be astronauts on board the space station, by the end of 2030 it's expected the space station is going to be empty. And by early 2031, it's most likely going to re-enter planet Earth and re-enter crashing in the location very close to right here. This is known as Point Nemo or Point of Inaccessibility because it's basically a point really, really far away from any land. It's also sometimes referred to as the Spacecraft Cemetery, representing the location where most of the large satellites or large spacecrafts usually end up at the end, obviously because there's just nobody there and nobody's going to get injured as they re-enter Earth. And as I mentioned, some of the modules, especially the newer ones, might be reused for the commercial missions later on. But that's basically going to be the end of this particular mission, and honestly, after 33 years in space, I think it's a pretty good end, especially since it's way, way overdue. And assuming that I'm still making videos by then, well, make sure to subscribe because I'm going to have quite a lot to say about the mission. Anyway, on that note, well, that's pretty much it. Pretty exciting announcement from NASA, definitely some good news and a bit of a closure in terms of what's going to happen to the ISS. And I guess time will tell how all of this goes with NASA and Roscosmos and a little bit of a conflict they have going on. On that note, subscribe. Share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, come back tomorrow to learn something else, and maybe support this channel on Patreon by joining the channel membership or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye bye.
Wait, he even kinda looks like Alf. Doesn't he?